Welcome to Insight. Today we're chatting with Tom Lilly, president of the board of the Flint Institute of Art, and trustees Catherine Bowles and Elizabeth Saab, who have generously agreed to share some of their experience with us of the Flint Institute of Arts and of this community. So I'd like to thank you all for joining us. It's just wonderful to have you. It's wonderful to be here at the Flint Institute of Arts. I would like to just talk a little bit about your experience as citizens of Flint, of citizens of Genesee County, and how you have viewed these institutions, your careers, the community, and the connections between all three aspects. And let's start with you, Kathy. If, if you could talk a little bit about how you got involved with this institution and also your own professional background and how that informs your work here. Well, let's start with that second part of your, of your question first. I am the retired CEO of the Valley Area Agency on Aging. So it's area agencies who 16 of them across the state of Michigan. Our primary goal is to work with the elderly to ensure we're able to provide programs and services that would allow them to live wherever they choose with dignity uh, till the end of their lives. And so uh, just working with the elderly and getting their perspective on different issues and concerns, uh, art being one, uh, many of them loved art and loved to participate in uh, projects and, and, and programs. Uh, so that's kind of a overview of how I learned about the Art Institute. But um, I don't recall ever being taken to a museum when I was growing up, unless it was a school trip or something like that. So as we moved here and, and became acclimated to this community, working on the community gala through my work with aging, um, helped me learn more about this community and all that this institution has to offer. So that's so interesting, right? The, the, the whole idea of, as a professional, being entrusted with ensuring that we benefit from the wisdom of people who are older mm -hmm. and also provide support because not only do we have to do that just as, as a matter of, of keeping faith with our elders, but also we're going to be older ourselves. So we have to have infrastructure to, today, mm -hmm. even if just in a, in a purely selfish manner, to ensure that we, our parents, our children can age in this community in place. And then through that exposure, you end up becoming involved as a volunteer and then as a board member. Tom, how did you get involved in this uh, renowned institution? I mean, you come in from a finance and you know CPA and, and those kinds of skills. How do you end up getting involved in art? Well, actually my involvement in art began much earlier as a, at a young age, but um, I actually started when I stepped down as a partner or owner of a CPA firm and announced to a couple of my clients that I was going to be stepping down and would have some time on my hands. And I wasn't sure exactly what I was going to be doing, but I wanted to find some ways to give back to the community. And she said, well, you know, we'd like to have you on the Flint Institute of Arts board. And I says, OK, fine. So uh, she arranged the interview uh, with John Henry. And he sat down with me and asked me a number of questions about my background, and that's kind of how that started. And so uh, talk a little bit about, you, you said that art started as a younger man. Could you talk a little bit about that? Oh, sure. So when I was very young, uh, my grandmother, who was quite an accomplished uh, painter, artist, um, uh, she and my mother would take myself and my two sisters to the various museums, including the Art Museum over in the Grand Rapids area. Mm -hmm. And um, at the time, I didn't realize what they were trying to do, accomplish and do, uh, but just get me familiar with the arts and, and uh, a better understanding. Yes. So when I moved to Genesee County in 1974 and learned about the whole cultural center, my first stop in the cultural center was actually my wife took me to a performance over at the Whiting. Mm -hmm. And although, you know, I've been to nice facilities before, I mean, the Whiting was just absolutely gorgeous mm -hmm. and the shows they put on were fabulous. 
My mother was working here as a curator mm -hmm. um, a long time ago when she met my father and just growing up over the years, I can't remember a time when I wasn't coming here for art classes or events or, or summer camp. And then as I ended up settling here and working here, um, I was invited similarly to Kathy to be on a committee for one of the fundraisers, the inaugural party event, which has become one of our signature events. And after working on that for a couple of years, I was honored to be invited to serve as a trustee. So one of the things that I remember, it was a, it was a comedy bit where, where somebody was holding a Campbell's soup can and they said, art. And then they held in their other hand, another Cam Campbell's soup can, they said, soup. Art, soup, art, soup, soup, art, art, soup. So it seems that, that what you're all talking about is community cohesion. You're talking about community service. You're talking about engaging different population groups. You're talking about taking professional competencies and placing them in service to community. Is it art or is it community? Well, is, it, is, it, is it community or is it business? Is it, is it, what what is this place? Is it is it an exhibition place or is it a school? Tom, well, I think it all goes hand in hand. I mean, it's a school. It's an exhibition place. Um, it's a, a facility that uh, provides wealth back to the community. Provides opportunity for all ages to enjoy various types of art. Um, so it it really covers the whole spectrum. I think. I agree. It's a community gathering place. Um, it, it's art. It's educational. It's fun. It's enlightening. It's exciting. Um, it's all of the above. It makes you want to come to see what what's what's happening now, what's going on now. So I think it's art and education. It's all of it. So let's talk a little bit about what makes this, this place uh, distinctive. Um, we're in reasonably close proximity to Chicago, which has the Art Institute of Chicago, Detroit, you know, with its renowned museum, museums. We've all, we're all uh, reasonably well-traveled. We've been to a lot of different institutions. Let's talk about the things that, that are distinctive here. One of the things that I find really interesting is, first of all, the quality of the collection is astounding and the breadth of the collection. Could you talk a little bit Elizabeth, since, since uh, your parents come from this curatorial background, you have this long association, could you talk a little bit about how you see the collections actually informing the experience of the Flint Institute of Art and being an asset in this sort of community building sense uh, for this area and for Genesee County? Mm -hmm. Well, you mentioned museums and other locations. And any museum has to start from somewhere. It comes from donated collections, um, you know, donations of funds to acquire collections. So I think it's always influenced a little bit by the people that support it. Mm -hmm. And the people in this area came from the background of the, you know, the auto industry. Um, we have a lot of immigrants. We're, we're a very diverse area. So I think over the years, as the collection has grown, as the museum has grown, as you'll see, I mean, it's really been transformed into a world-class facility, both art, um, education as well as um, exhibitions. And there's a maker tradition that is here, right? Which which I think it really informs the the uh, the art school. And I hope uh, just from this son's exhibition, if people come and listen to the videos and whatnot. I hope a lot of people come in and listen to that because it shows how particularly these men had to deal with this issue of racism. But I think uh, over the last few, many years, um, the Art Institute has r really been uh, integral in trying to do uh, black history programs. Maybe you can see they're sponsoring it this year too. So I think the, the museum wants and is trying and has been uh, trying to make sure that they're part of the dialogue and then they show themselves friendly in that they're bringing in uh, uh, these these wonderful exhibitions that are related to and can be it, it, it can be exciting to people of color. This community gives and it gives and it continues to give, uh, and that includes the Mott Foundation and all that they've done and not for the cultural center and the and the Flint Suit Arts uh, uh, itself. But on top of that, the people who are here, uh, the more you come into the museum and see what it has to offer, the more you want to you know uh, add to it. Uh, either through wealth uh, that you contribute or maybe through legacy uh, to see that this continues. 
specifically with the educational system, we had a program um, for college students to be able to join for, for many years, and I know it was very successful, um, and it's, it's important that people can be able to start enjoying the museum early, seeing the benefits that we bring. We also have some some programs with Mott Community College. I know they hosted some events here um, that were that were great, brought out a lot of students and their families who might otherwise have never had reason to come here. And it's just another way to bring people in, to let them see what we have to offer. Hopefully they find something that sparks their interest and it can grow into um, a future partnership with them or, or what they may do later in their life. But I think what the museum is doing is now we've instituted this um, uh, contemporaries group. Mm -hmm. And that's the younger group of individuals. They do things that they would be interested in, but it still exposes them to the Flint Institute of Arts and the things that are going on here. So the cultivation of that contemporaries group will undoubtedly roll into maybe future board members and things like that. So I think the laying the groundwork with that contemporaries group right now is the, the, the kingpin of uh, selecting future board members through that through that committee. Let's complete this discussion with um, a discussion uh, about how you decide to, uh, on the balance between the school piece, where you have 2,200 enrolled students um, and you do a lot of studio art here, the, the clay facilities are amazing. How do you ensure that the investment is balanced between the two so that each side can develop its own sense of excellence, but also in a way that is that creates a brand identity, an institutional identity that is complementary to each side. Would you care to just sort of talk a little bit about, about that, your views on, on maintaining balance, and then we'll go around the room, and then we'll we'll give Kathy the last word since, since we're on this, <laughs> this side. Um, well, I think a lot goes into that, but at the board level, you know, we, we're seeing budgets, we're approving budgets for mm -hmm. the institute, if you're talking strictly financially. We're looking at fundraising, efforts um, and where they may be lacking and trying to make sure that enough care and attention is provided to all the different facets. But it's also making sure that we all understand that it is a balance and that they each support each other. When you have people coming for the classes, they're going to go walk through the exhibit afterward and maybe see a different media or style they're not used to. Or similarly, someone might come for a particular exhibit like the community exhibit right now, not even knowing that we had this facility here. And that might bring them in and be they might become a future student. So it's making sure that we all understand that, that they, they really improve each other and that we need to take care of both. Through the school, Students have an opportunity, opportunity to produce art that is then made available for sale in the museum gift shop. So not only can they create art, but they can create art that can be sold and that they can make money from. And that helps them with their uh, whole process as far as wanting to continue that on into a profession. Our executive director brings in the community. Um, and we've done that as far as I've known for the last 15, 16 years in making sure that we have the community involvement with, with this institution. This community is so rich with uh, talent. It really is. I mean, they freely give with their, their, their time, talent, and many times their treasure. <laughs> so I think this community is so rich with talent and, and giving of their time and of their treasure you don't, I don't know that you find that in other communities. I mean, of this size, of a, 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 an area of this size in Flint, Michigan. And there's another thing that I think is so very important. There's no compromise on excellence in any of these different disciplines. It's very, very deliberate, isn't it? Absolutely. It is. It is. Absolutely. It is. Well, this has been a fantastic conversation. Thank you so much for sharing your insights and and the experiences that you, that you all have. Um, Kathy, Kathy uh, Bowles, um, trustee of the Flint Institute of Art, uh, Tom Lilly, chair of the board of the Institute of Art, and also uh, trustee Elizabeth Saab. Thank you so much for sharing your insights and for sharing your experiences of this fantastic institution. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you.